Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is the Dash 9 that I've talked about in my previous videos that I wanted to weather up. It is also my entry into the third down and dirty weathering contest. As it is a scale trains operator model, I do need to get the detail parts put onto it. So I will get those put on and get the glass masked and be back in just a bit. All right, here's what I have done so far and a quick 360 view to show that it is a clean model. I have added the detail parts, the plow MU hoses and brake hose to the front of the model and the cut lever and hoses to the rear. I've also removed the wheel sets and have masked off the glass and different lights on the model. To mask it, I put a strip of painter's tape onto my cutting mat and cut the correct lengths that I need and then put it over the glass. Lastly, I have used a Q-tip to clean off the errant fingerprints that I unintentionally got onto the model. The next step is to get a dull coat put onto it so there is a good base for the paint to stick to. For my dull coat, I use Krylon Matte Finish 1311. I know there are other products out there, so make sure you use what you are most comfortable with. I make sure to start and stop my sprays off from the locomotive to help ensure an even coat and I also use multiple light coats. I also use a cheap turntable to help ensure I get the entire locomotive and keep me from touching the locomotive while the dull coat is still wet. Now that the dull coat is dry, it is time for some color. For my base coat, I use cheap craft paints, burnt umber, desert sand, and trail tan. For detailing, I have started to use Vallejo paints. The colors I use from them are black, German Camo Black Brown, Dark Rust, Light Rust, and later on Wood from their model airline, but as you can see, I forgot to add it into the lineup. At this point in time, I only use acrylic paint. These are the four pictures I used as inspiration for this project. Thank you to both of the mats and Casey for allowing me to include them. Links to the pictures will be below. For this project, I mainly used my airbrush. It is a cheap one that does not allow you to change the pressure, and I am not sure what it is set at, but it does what I need it to do. I started with a base color. This is a mix of the desert sand, trail tan, and just a little bit of burnt umber to darken it a little. I mixed these colors to what I wanted in an empty medicine bottle, and then added some distilled water until it was the consistency of milk, and started to spray it onto the locomotive. While I'm working on getting the base coat put on, there were a few things that stood out to me from my inspiration pictures. One, the long hood of the locomotive seemed to be relatively clean. To help keep it that way, I used a scrap piece of cardstock to mask the body on the side I was working on. Two, there seemed to be some grime that went halfway up to the cab. Three, there was one part of the fuel tank that was clean, and since it was a small area, after the first dull coat application, I cut some tape and masked over the location that was in the pictures. Four, the trucks had a darker rust color on them. Fifth and lastly, the exhaust seemed to be a darker color more often than the silver that it came painted. As such, I wanted to include these onto this locomotive. When painting, I tried to continuously look at both sides of the locomotive to help keep the paint even on both sides. I also spray in different angles to make sure the full surface is covered. Twice on this project, I needed to go back and clean up some errant paint. To do this, I used some distilled water on a cotton swab and wiped it away. I also to make sure to wait until it is completely dry before continuing to paint. Now it is time that I get some of the rust color onto the trucks. To do this, I took Vallejo's Dark Rust and diluted it with their airbrush thinner. I just mixed this in the airbrush cup as I knew I wouldn't be using much of it. As you can see, I also have a cardstock mask that I have cut out a portion that allows me to mask the areas around the trucks. 
When I first put this color onto the trucks, I thought that it was a perfect match. Unfortunately, it was not. I will cover that, however, in another section further in the video. There were a few spots that needed some of the rust color, but they were in locations I could not get with the airbrush. So instead, I just used a regular paintbrush to add the color. As I was consulting the reference photos, I noticed that there was a little bit darker color going up the cab. As I had the dark rust mixture in the paint cup still, I added that going up the cab on both sides to darken it a little. Once I was finished with that, I then went back and added some to the fuel tank area as well. To do the roof of the locomotive, I quickly cut out a template onto some cardstock to try and use it. Ultimately, I found out that it wasn't the best and ended up scrapping the idea. The color that I used is Vallejo's Chocolate Brown and was also mixed in the paint cup with airbrush thinner. When looking, I realized that this was almost a perfect match for the darker color of the exhaust. I sprayed on as much as I could onto the exhaust and then went back with a brush to touch up what I had missed. Also, I ended up using the chocolate brown color to darken up the air tanks a little and get rid of the silver. I know it looks like I am removing the paint and returning it to the silver color. However, it is just an illusion of the light on the wet paint. As soon as it dries, it is the dark color as it should be. At this point, I now switch over and start using a brush. I filmed this a little backwards as I only used the craft swabs to help remove paint that accidentally got onto portions of the locomotive that I did not want paint to be on. I used the 10 brush for the rest of this and I got it in the pack of brushes that was shown. The color I used for the streaks going down the fuel tank is the German camo black brown. For this I diluted the paint with distilled water and a paint palette and looked at reference pictures to see where they would be at. I then go over the location that they would be with multiple light strokes with light amount of paint. This helps to make sure I get them exactly where I want them to be, but also helps me to not overdo it by adding too many streaks or making them too wide.
I also took some of this color and went over the top of the fuel tank to darken it up and get rid of some of the silver that did not get hit with the airbrush. I then took Vallejo Black, diluted it again with distilled water, and started to paint grills on the sides of the locomotive. In the interest of time, I only show painting one of the top grills and one of the lower grills, as it is the same process for all of them. I then took the black and added some additional color to the parts of the bottom of the locomotive. That being around the air tanks, on the hydraulics on the sides of the truck frames, and also some additional streaking along the fuel tank. Here is a final 360 view of the locomotive after I have applied its final dull coat to it. I applied the final coat in the same way that I applied the first. As the dull coat was drying, I decided to weather the wheels. I painted them with light rust with just a paintbrush. I then went back with a craft swab and cleaned off the spots that electrical contact would be made with the locomotive. After I reassembled the locomotive and took a few pictures, I realized that I was unhappy with the way the truck frames turned out. They had become too dark with the dull coat. I decided to take them off and repaint them to make them look more how I wanted them to. I used a mix of dark rust and wood, which ended up looking exactly how I wanted it to. I then went over a few spots with German black brown to add a few dark spots on the sides of the trucks like in the prototype pictures. I then added a final dull coat onto the trucks as well once the paint was dry. Thank you for joining me on my journey to weather this Dash 9 locomotive. Here are a few in progress pictures with the final product on a few spots on the layout. I hope you enjoyed this video and there was something in it that you could use on your models. Thanks for watching.